we have very very important guests with us and that particular honor i will leave of introduction to our president dr sunil manjrekar oh, so good man. evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of gulf master business forum we welcome his excellency ambassador of tonga mr akola the council minister minister council mr so- simon for his presence here today our speaker ms amruta and mr sanjay so welcome you all on behalf of gmbf today our uh, theme of uh, the program is sustainability in business and esg opportunities we are blessed to have uh, some distinguished guests amongst us today uh, starting with his excellency the ambassador of tonga a warm welcome to you his excellency to this gmbf event once again and may we request now you to deliver your keynote address on opportunities for business in tonga how is sustainability pertinent to tonga well when you have a small population of just over 100000 people your main island is uh, 26 square kilometers of where 80% of the population reside you have no other natural resources than what you can grow on the land or fish from the sea if you do not live a sustainable life you're not going to live very long or as a country you will not last so i could talk about sustainability in the aspects of our daily life but i'm sure all of you are experts and well acquainted with uh, those sort of things what are the business opportunities uh, available in tonga well we are probably the most undeveloped uh, tourism uh, pacific island but we are probably well not probably we are definitely the most beautiful uh, pacific island so we look at it as far as our engagement in the uae and the middle east as a whole that if you look at tonga it is like a beautiful picture that just needs a few touch ups and those few touch ups are going to be investment opportunities specifically in tourism and making it truly the jewel of the pacific making it one of the few countries in the world that the majority of the world have never traveled to so that's my short speech on investment possibilities may i request uh, amruta to please come on stage and so the topic we were talking about uh, what is sustainability or how is it really linked to us so let me take you all uh, 150 years back when the industry industrial revolution started that's when we realized uh, this magic of capitalist economy how we could start using earth's natural resources make money and some of us could be richer than others right that's how it started uh, but during all of those uh, since then to now all of these years though we have seen a lot of positive effects of capitalist economy or industrial revolution uh, we were a bit mindless so what we did is we basically ended up over consuming nature's uh processes resources and all whatever we are doing so if you look at it all of our industry is finally based on uh earth's either processes or resources so for example uh farming who actually makes food uh so to actually grow food what we need it's sun yeah water do we do anything about that no so if you look at it lot of the processes even the oil where does it come from nature has created oil for us right so all of these things if you look at it in a broad perspective uh, so we have been basically using natural resources and making a business out of it 
and becoming rich out of it. Yeah, that's capitalist economy definition. So uh, what has happened because of this mindless overconsumption, uh, climate change has happened. Uh, so we have basically, uh, because of the global warming, we all know the uh, discussion of 1.2 degree, 1.5 degree, I won't go there. Then secondly, what has happened is biodiversity loss and uh, soil health. We have affected that. How did we do that? So in a very simple um, language, if you want to explain it to a five-year-old, uh, what we have done, we have snatched all Earth's natural resources from other species, we humans, and kept it for ourselves. Yeah, this is what we have done. Not just that, we have used them for our benefits. Yeah, poaching, this and that, correct? So uh, that's how we have created biodiversity loss. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Kaushik, Sanjay Kaushik on stage. Thank you. Talking about something which is very, very dear to us. This is something which everyone wants us. And every froster promises you to make rich. And they're not making you rich, but what they're trying to do is, they're trying to take your money and become themselves rich. Uh, you might get emails where somebody has got a lottery or somebody cousin died or somebody father died whose second name is similar to your name which he has not written in the email and he want to give you some millions and trillions of dollars nobody gives you that um, by the way even before moving to this uh, do you even remember where were you say two months or three months or one year back do you know who knows that your phone if you look at your phone and you go to your google maps it will tell you exactly which location, which hotel, which premises, where you went up to 10 years back. Somebody talking of the privacy, and I was telling some young girl yesterday, we were sitting into one of the offices, and she was talking about privacy, and I told her, privacy is a myth. Anyone who's having a digital footprint, having a smartphone in the hand, having a laptop, having a LinkedIn account, or having a Facebook account or social media presence, entire privacy is gone. In fact, one of my friend who works for Google, uh, Microsoft, he says only there are two types of uh, companies or two types of people in this world. One, who know they have been hacked. Second, they don't know they have been hacked. Believe me, everyone is hacked. Somebody somewhere is listening and monitoring the what you are doing as an individual data set. If you think GDPR has helped at some bit, I think yes, no, very difficult to understand because most of the time we sign up the explicit consent which GDPR asks without even reading the documents what it says. Uh, we always see these kind of ransomware attacks and when we talk about the new age frauds, ransomware is something which is big. And AIMS, since we all are from here, India, most of them, sorry, not you, uh, uh, we, most of us are from India, we know AIMS is the largest, <coughs> sorry, the largest um, place where the uh, lot of uh, leaders, the national political leaders, the prime ministers and others, they get their treatment here. That went under a ransomware attack and the ransomware attack was so bad that it took a couple of days to recover the services at AIMS. Hello, uh, my name is Amrutak Shem Kalyani. I'm founder of a social enterprise called Sustainability Tribe, uh, which has been educating society in the UAE for the last 14 years and inspiring climate action. I'm also founder of a, a sustainability consulting business called AK Sustainability Advisory where I help businesses in the transformation of a sustainable business, uh, ESG consulting, assessment as well as employee engagement. 
So uh, today I was uh, invited by GMBF uh, as one of their member to talk about uh, sustainability and ESG opportunities uh, for businesses and um, I prefer to touch upon how um, small and medium enterprises can uh, adapt sustainability frameworks, ESG frameworks and be future ready. Uh, we still don't have um, regulations for SMEs and um, medium enterprises for uh, sustainability um, uh, uh, practices to be mandatory. However, they are going to come very soon. So, uh, yeah, so basically uh, any business, uh, any business or any individual, uh, we all contribute to climate change and that's why it's our responsibility and it's an urgent need right now to uh, adapt to sustainable practices in our individual life as well as uh, as a business and uh, because um, in the UAE uh, year of sustainability has been announced and this year COP28 is coming so this is a very relevant topic uh, where everyone wants to know and uh, sustainability is not a rocket science but there are uh, proper scientific pathways to uh, adapt sustainability and that's what I covered today. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Sanjay Kaushik and uh, I represent Netrika Consulting which is a cyber security and risk consulting company. It was lovely having been on the GMBF event on the eve of Republic Day. We celebrated the Republic Day with GMBF and my team at UAE, Rakhi Dhawan, who is based out here, introduced to me GMBF. and. Being the part of this event, which was house full packed of professionals and the business owners locally here in UAE, was a very, very magnificent audience who uh, was a great audience who listened to me on my topic on cybersecurity. There was a lot of question answers and it was a very, very successful program. I really enjoyed it, loved it. In the end, I would love just like to say Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you.